Welcome to another session of the essential keys to painting. Now, for this session we're going to be talking about the key passage. And as you may imagine, passage is very important in your works of art. Now, grab a seat on a beanbag chair, comfy couch, side of the room with a pillow on it, outside on your porch, wherever you may feel comfortable. And let's talk about passage. I pulled up some examples and we'll get to those eventually. But first I just want to share with you the information. Now, passage is the idea that the viewer, as he, he or she looks at a work of art, can effort, effortlessly move from one place to another. Um, making con conscious connections in your work of art is something that's very important as an artist. Now, that just means that it should be something that when you're painting your work, you should be thinking about where will the eye want to go? What is the direction that I want the eye to go from here to there? And I'll show you examples in the actual works. Um, now, I was reading and one of the um, more well-known authors that I was reading when it comes to painting was saying that not one square inch of your work should be the same. So there should always be something changing in your work. There should always be some sort of a color change or a shade of the tint of the tone of something just needs to be changing every inch of your work. So if you think about it, about an eye hole, and then if what would happen in his story is his art teacher would come up and he would, you know, put up the one inch by one inch ruler if it hadn't changed in that much room. Literally, he said that his art teacher would take the work and go throw it away. I'm not going to do that. It'd be kind of hard in this setting for me to grab your work and throw it away, but I am going to suggest that you change your painting every inch. Variety in your work is so key, quintessential. It pretty much, the trees in the foreground should not have the same color as the trees in the background or the trees in the middle ground. These different th three different planes a foreground, middle ground, and background should have specific colors which can be just a little bit of a different tone or shade for each specific plane. Now the books talk about that a lot is your foreground colors should be the brightest colors and then as you move back there should be just a little bit less brightness and less detail to them. Um, that's something to definitely consider in your work. Now one last thing I wanted to really talk about is to really get that in interesting look to your work. What you really need to do is create that passage for the viewer's eyes to kind of go throughout it. I brought one example from my own work here that I thought I did a decent job of creating that visual passage. Now as you look here, I actually created this design element to bring the viewer's eye in and then it has this nice lighter area to kind of let it rest but it's not you know there's always differences and then that brings you over here which will technically bring you up this visual staircase here which brings you to this next level which will bring you over and then this irregular shape and this unique line will bring you all the way up here which is where your eye is going to kind of rest. And then if you want to, you can bring this dark line down and continue the whole process all over again. That's what I mean by visual passage. That idea of, well, if the sky was all white or if the sky was a flat blue, you would think about the sky and it would bring a stop to the visual passage. So I have it kind of like a gradient, like the sky does, going down so that all of this attention that would be up here just naturally flows downward to this other visual passage that I have going in here. Another work that I have some visual passage in is this trained um, ink wash kind of unique style of bleeding colors and 
But anyway, as you see, the train's visual passage and the tracks and the train all go to this point, but then this is a dark enough area that the eye will naturally follow this light area up to the top and kind of rest again right here and then bring it back down. It's kind of this constant circle of visual passage in the work. Um, if you would want to go to history, history's examples of visual passage, um, this is a great example um, in this painting by Van Gogh. As you can see, the starry night and the way the movement is in the sky brings you all around the work. And that's one of the reasons why it's such a famous work. Um, if you want to look at just some other examples of how artists can do it, um, here's a work. Um, these are all actually pretty good. But let's look at even the first painting ever done. It or, you know, notably some of the first works in history is these cave paintings done. And look at the visual passage that they already are using as you kind of move and the movement around the work because of that preconceived idea of what the work needs and what it should have included in it. Uh, another one, you know, we can go to Salvador Dali's uh, Persistence of Time painting. And you can see here that in this work, there's this dark area here, so you don't think about it, right? That just kind of naturally doesn't draw your eye to it. So then you're drawn here, and this goes back, and just that slightest curve brings your eye up here, and this brings you back to this drooping clock, which literally brings your eye down, and this clock does that exact same thing with the way it droops down. Now this Salvador Dali is really interesting in, in the way he used passage in his work because he was a surrealist, so he was using these um, kind of unique style of objects in ways that you're not used to seeing them. So then the visual passage was actually, I think, some of the most intriguing um, visual passage was created by those surrealists. So that's all I have on visual passage for you. I hope you uh, just remember that idea of considering where your eye is going to be led. You don't want your work to have this huge visual arrow pointing off so that your eye just flows out and then you're done. Because that's going to naturally just let the viewer kind of look at it and it, their eye will just go off the page and they'll move on to another thing, something else. That circular motion of bringing the eye around your work is going to be what will bring you to have another key to being a successful artist and a successful painter. Thanks so much for stopping in. I look forward to talking about our next um, point, which is the focal area of your work. So that's going to be our next visual key, and we'll talk about focal area soon. Thanks for uh, coming and listening. Have a great day.